Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about utilizing your computers and such in an off-grid circumstance. So, of course, I'm here at this lovely little lake, and uh, I'm doing pretty much everything here off-grid, including <laughs> right down there, boiling water for coffee. Look at that. That's totally awesome. Well, what we're going to do here today is we're going to head right on inside my van, which has a bunch of solar panels up there on the top. And I'm going to show you guys how I'm using Linux and what I'm doing for Linux in an off-grid circumstance. Of course, you can follow along on my travel channel over on Tux Traveler. I'll have a link for that down below if you want to see more of the nature-y side of things. But if you like the tech side of things, I thought many of you guys might like to see this. Before we go into the van, though, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I have going on in here. Um, I have a number of different computers and Raspberry Pis kind of built into the walls. Um, little geeky, but a little bit of infrastructure. My van has a full gigabit Ethernet system, including Ethernet ports built into the walls, so I can just plug a laptop in because I don't use wireless internet unless I absolutely have to. I do have a few capabilities of doing that. Now, of course, for internet, I'm using, right now, I'm using a IoT um, cellular modem. And uh, you may not be able to see it, but there is actually a very micro antenna. The very, very tip, you can see a little thing right there. That's an antenna, which is, uh, it actually helps to pick up and amplify some of the cellular signals. So I get a little bit better cellular signal inside the van than I do otherwise. Now, for those people who will mention it, Starlink, I've been looking at Starlink. I'm following along. Last week, they are doing more testing on the mobile environment. Its cost is kind of down pretty low where you need it. There's a few factors. The first is it needs very difficult setup. You need to carry with you a large dish, and the power power usage is still way, way too high. I'm running my modem on less than 15 watts of power, which is almost nothing. Now, the reason we're going to do the good test right now is I'm actually going to show you with everything turned on right now how much actual real power I'm using because my batteries right now are completely full, which means that all of the amperage draw that you'll see on my solar panels is being used in the current consumption. So let's go ahead and jump on into the van. So inside of the van, I have a couple of different monitors here mounted directly to the walls. And uh, these guys are all on mounts here. And I do keep the mounts bungeed back with a little bungee cord here. This prevents them from going all wild while we're driving down the road. Now I have a few different computers set up here. The two computers are on right now are my media PC, which is actually this Dell micro tower. And the other computer that is on right now is my main processing PC, which is down here. Now, this is the only PC I have in here that has to be run on uh, AC power. So I have right up here is my AC inverter controller. This enables me to run uh, 110 volt AC power uh, through a series of outlets. I have one of the outlets is back there. The other outlet I have is over here. And I have another outlet up here, which is currently charging my camera battery. Looks like that's full. And there is a cat. Want to say hi? Like, not really. All right. So, having a look at my charge up here, 14.3 indicates the batteries are full. Panels are drawing in full voltage. And right now, I'm running 13.5 amps. That is everything that is on right now is running 13.5 amps. Most of that... This computer's running about um, probably between uh, 10 and uh, 10 and 12 amps right now because it's processing a video uh, for one of my other channels. And so that video now has 17 minutes to go, processing on Caden Live. This computer is Linux Mint. This computer over here is running Endeavor OS. Now let's talk a little bit about the Ethernet and the overall networking. So the networking in here, this is what I mentioned, the IoT uh, modem. This guy is bringing in cellular signals on a Verizon SIM card. And this is feeding information into the FitLit PC, which is running PFSense. Pretty close to the current version of PFSense. A little warm up there. I need to um, 
cool that down a little bit. Now in the back, which you may not be able to see quite as easily, we have over here is a network switch. This is a eight port gigabit switch from Netgear. And back behind it right here, this is a Raspberry Pi that is uh, running an ISP config. This is a PHP server that I use for offline development. And then way in the back, which you won't be able to see at all, there is, uh, mostly for lighting purposes, there's actually a, um, another Raspberry Pi, which is my Open Media Vault Center. So OMV, which is a giant file system. Now I have digital spaghetti up here, which is running all of my power lines because all of these computers, with the exception of the big guy right here, is running on these little switches. So these switches here will control each component of the network individually. This guy here is the cellular modem. This guy is the router. This guy is the network switch. Now all of these guys run actually already at 12 volts which is fairly common, so it's just a matter of making sure I have the right size ports. This guy here, I need to order this special type of cable, wired it on in right up through here, fused it separately, and run that guy in to the ports. So everything is running like that. Then we're running switches. Now the next computer is this guy up here. These micro towers are basically like laptops, and so nearly every laptop in the world runs at 19 volts. So what you do is you buy one of these guys back here. This is called a buck converter or a step up converter. You can do step up or step down or buck. They go by a variety of version uh, names. So this guy here is a 12 volt feeds in through these lines, and it feeds out 19 volts. And you just need to make sure that the amperage is at least the size that the computer charge adapter wants. In this case, I think it was a 65 watt adapter, so that's about 3 amps. So this guy here is actually a 5 amp adapter. And then we had to get a separate Dell charging court and um, basically produce a little charging cable right here. Feeds on in, and now I can operate this computer with this toggle switch right here. Turn this guy on, that computer boots up, and now we are turning on and running Endeavor OS. Now the other computers that I will have built in here, you'll notice two Raspberry Pis. This guy is running Manjaro. This is actually my primary work computer when I'm doing uh, web development. This is the computer that gets used for that. This guy over here is a... Uh, uh, this is a open source media center, which is running a Kodi box to watch some movies that are off of my individual port. And then over here, we have a HDMI switch. This is an HDMI 2.0 3-in-1 switch. This allows me to toggle this computer monitor between Endeavor OS, the Raspberry Pi, and dual monitoring the uh, main processing computer here. All right, so that is how that guy is set up to work. And onto the processing computer, it's basically built on into the walls. Let's talk about how I have this done. Down here, this is an acrylic computer board mount. People use them usually for testing graphics cards and situations like that. I mounted this guy up onto here and then literally redneck style tied this guy down to this board with rope. Yeah, that's a redneck PC right there. Now you can actually buy a separate power switch, which I ran right on through here. So now I have a beautiful power switch to manage my uh, my power there. And of course, recent additions as I added the SD card reader because of all the video production that I do. Didn't have one of those before. All right, so the next factor that we're going to have down here is laptop charging. Because of course I have a few laptops on board. I'm going to move this cable out of the way. And I'm going to show you this nice nifty new device. So you remember the buck converters that I had? We bought a second one of these guys. And then I feed that right on over into right here. This is a standard 12 volt um, output, which I can plug into here to power this adapter. Or I can plug it into here and run this guy right here is an 8 volt adapter. This guy will actually run my camera off of my house battery rather than having to use AC adapters or relying on the battery when I'm recording 
uh, like live streams, for example. Now, when you plug this guy in here, this output shoots up to this one right here, which is a 19-volt output line. And then you can buy a pack of tips. These will run old Dell computers, new Dell computers, and Lenovo laptops. You just pop them off here. And they all have the exact same port that goes right on into here. So run that into here. And now it can plug this into any Dell or HP laptop and it will run just fine. That way I can charge batteries, run laptops off of my house batteries instead of again relying on your DC adapters. So all of these functions here allow me to run Linux in an off-grid circumstance. So what are the applications? My application is van life. I can get a chance to drive around to amazing places, hang out on cool lakes, and still do all my different work with a variety of Linux computers, whether those be laptops integrated on in and stuff like that. You could also do this in a off-grid circumstance if you're out there living in the cabin out in the middle of nowhere, or maybe if you want to have a backup power source, or hey, if you want to go green and convert your office to solar power, um, what do I use? I use about, at the most, about two uh, kilowatts a day. Um, my theoretical charging capability is about two and a half, and I'm actually pretty much perpetually on full. So I'd say I'm closer to maybe one and a half kilowatt power usage a day. And uh, that is uh, all I'm doing for... Um, basic computers and sometimes cooking on electricity and things like that. But it allows me to have a good off-grid application and still run Linux through a variety of different ways that doesn't always require turning on an inverter and plugging in your laptop's charging AC adapter and do it so you're going DC into AC and back to DC and all this nonsense. Way easier, cheaper, and, and uh, lower power consumption to just convert it from 12 to 19 on the spot using those or utilizing a variety of different applications here. This allows me to watch movies, run multiple different computers, a variety of different Linux distributions, and a lot of other factors that you might do for uh, work or for play in a purely off-grid circumstance. So the reality is, yes, you can do Linux on the road, offline, without a huge, be, uh, without a huge deal. Um, Let's talk briefly about the data usage. Um, the downside of my uh, modem system here is I am capped at 150 gigabytes. This means I'm not watching a lot of stuff in HD. I'm not streaming in HD anymore because of that. Something like Starlink would solve that, but Starlink's dish takes about as much power as this big computer. If I run this thing for several hours, it will kill the batteries. So that's Starlink's big problem right now in an off-grid circumstance is it just takes too much power. Uh, people are measuring about 70 to 90 watts. This computer runs about 100 at idle, about 120 watts when it's processing like it is right now. So these are some of those factors that you do as you are... Um, uh, as you're thinking about the power consumptions, uh, let's talk briefly about my battery capacity. I run a 200 amp battery capacity, so that is a 2400 uh, watt hour um, battery capacity. So that is a lot to do a lot of different things. Um, and my solar panels, I'm running 500 watts of solar on an MPPT charge controller. My inverter is a 1500 watt inverter. I did 1500 because I thought I was going to have 150 amp BMS, which uh, you have to cap out your BMS, uh, determining on how much flow can go in or out of it at a time. End up getting a 200, so I could have run a larger inverter, but um, oh well, I didn't know that at the time I <laughs> bought the inverter. So there you have it, guys. There is running Linux, a variety of computers, a variety of different sources, in an offline environment. In my case, mobile in a van. In other cases, you could do it just to have an off-grid system, a more green system, or um, maybe just you just want to make sure you have good power backups if you're in a place where your electricity goes down. This is easy and fairly cheap to set up. So you can easily do it out there. And by the way, lithium battery prices are dropping because the technology is moving along. 
I could get a battery 30% bigger than I have right now for half the cost only two years after buying my battery components. Actually, a year after buying my battery components. So uh, there's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on all these things. Um, what else should I try in here in an off-grid Linux environment that would be great for the Linux channel? I'm absolutely willing to experiment, um, whether it be different Raspberry Pi operating systems. Since I have the spare Raspberry Pi now, I can do that more efficiently. Whether it's different computers, builds, or setups, whatever else, let me know. And again, if you want to follow along where I'm going travel-wise, have a look at my channel on Tux Traveler. Uh, we last video we did, we did some uh, USB modifications. We talked about uh, homemade cookies on the road and the two different ways to cook them. And we, you know, we're just doing a few things like that. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.